there we have some of our team out there learning to paddleboard. Some of the volunteers, Kathleen. We were blessed to have a, a surfer, a surfer enthusiast here recently. And he went out with some of our team and got more equipment for them. So more could go together. And they're there learning that skill. It's always good to learn good skills. It's a challenge. Have dominion over the earth, over creation. People, before we have surprise trouble, I'm going to switch over from Wi-Fi to data. So we don't have interruptions. So just bear with me. Maybe one or two will get knocked off, but just come back up. Good, I think most of you were able to stay on, even the numbers grew. That's great. So let's see if we can line up these good people again. With the sunlight there. We need light to see things, but sometimes the light can be so intense that we only see the light. So there seem to be four paddle boards out there and a, a little canoe of sorts. The water is a little more active, but there are a couple of um, jet, jet skis out there and they're pretty intensive and moving the water. I'm not sure if these waves are coming from that or just a natural movement here inside the lake. Today our readings are readings of comfort and consolation. is comforting his people. The prophets have that about them. It's not all hard critique of bad behavior. It's about the grace of God coming to renew life. And that's beautiful. And that's God's ultimate goal. Just as parents do with children. Because they love them, they'll guide them, even though the children might resist. And they'll console them and celebrate. I wonder how our, our tomatoes are doing here. Some animals have really enjoyed some of them. They really need to be staked and lifted up.
get the text to kick in here. We're very used now to many readings from Amos where he's putting a little salt into the wounds to heal them over the past week. And today we have this marvelous text of consolation. I don't know if you can hear the birds here. They're not that very loud, but they're there chirping away. speaks of peace to his people. The Lord restores his people. This can be a great blessing and grace for us in our time. On that day I will raise up the fallen hut of David will wall up its breaches, raise up its ruins. You can see the archaeological ruins in there. But we can think of all the bombed cities, the families bereaved through violence, the highest international level and more local levels. I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in days of old. I, the Lord, will do this. The plowman shall overtake the reaper. What an interesting image and the vintager him who sows the seed so the harvest is already coming barely on sowing you know sometimes when people are in dire need there's a beautiful phrase we just have to make one step towards God and he makes the rest of the journey toward us like that prodigal son coming home. And the father ran out to meet him. He shortened the trip home. He was home at last. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Near indeed is his salvation for those who fear him. This is an experience that 
all of us who have received the little gift of faith, we need to, to ponder and understand that the world needs us to also speak of this coming consolation of the Lord. Sun team there fishing at dawn. Something beautiful about that. Here we have all these tents, families, lots and lots of tents. Context with nature is so educational, so serening, it opens the mind and the heart from little cubby holes of closed-in subjectivity. That's a gift from God as well. Sometimes we are troubled. We need to take a walk in the woods, in the park. Take time, slow down. Open our hearts. Great gifts. Sometimes we we get into a little corner and all we see are the walls and we cry. The frustrations and we're beaten. Maybe beat ourselves up. Anxieties. The Lord speaks of peace to his people. Isn't that a beautiful thing to do? You know somebody that's a bit down, you say, let's go for a walk. Let's go for a stroll and chat. The beauty of the family, yesterday we had the call of Matthew and it kept reverberating in me today. It was one person and Jesus gave that person his whole attention and looked into his eyes and says, come, follow me. And look at the fruit of that, Matthew's gospel. It's still a blessing for us and from which we're reading today. We're in chapter nine. And just the reflections on reality. You don't put new wine into old wineskins. An experience of people of the time as they looked after the treasure of the grape harvest and the wine production, preparing new skins. That's also a good therapy to if it's possible, maybe in some industrial systems, it's not easy to have close access to these processes today. But to know where tradespeople are working and watch them at work, watch somebody methodically sewing. I remember one day I was here in Tiberias, I went to get my shoes fixed. No, it was actually to get a few torn pieces of trousers fixed <laughs> and there was a little uh, elderly Jewish lady there and her daughter-in-law was there and just to watch her as she was mending people's clothes it was incredibly reasonably priced you know watching people work systematically is very good for us there's so much to learn from 
the skills and methods of work, even for the spiritual life, one stitch at a time. And our world will be healed one person at a time. And that encounter, Jesus wants a personal encounter. He wants to teach us and the, the immense bit good you can do for somebody. Bring them to, to see God's works in nature, in a flower, in his people, in a neighbor, in an elderly person who's fading, who no longer has the lush green, but is close to that fruit bearing for eternal life. And we get out of our little cubby hole. Sometimes our passions plague us. Our past hearts plague us. The world is very dark all of a sudden. But seeing another person in their condition, how that can be a blessing. How that can shed immense, beautiful light, powerful light, gentle light on our situation. Let's leave it like that for today, people. God bless you. See you later, alligators. Thank you for joining. Let's pray for everyone. Let's pray for all those who are going to be close to somebody today who's in trouble. That they'll have the right words, the right kindness the gentle approach, that warmth. See you later.